Hey guys, I've got my Admiral 24C16 back up on the workbench. That's the vintage 12 inch set in this mahogany cabinet. If you recall my last video I left off where I just got the picture looking great. Since then I've been working on the sound and still no luck. The amp is working. There's a static will increase with, uh, as I turn the volume control. And if I touch the audio feed, or video feed rather, uh, it does react, so clearly sound is going from the set to the amp. Now, the sound section's up in here, and I've tested all the components, replaced the bad ones, checked the tubes, replaced them with the good tubes with other good tubes just for the heck of it, and nothing seems to help. Which leaves me with one last recourse, and that is to do an alignment. So it's time to put away the multimeter and bring out the big guns, which is uh, this stuff up here. Uh, luckily, I've got detailed instructions because this is kind of a, a lost art. But uh, I have very detailed instructions here, and I'm going to go through. I'm going to avoid doing any of the video stuff, though, because the picture is working great. Uh, so I've, I've got my gear set up. Um, and I need to go through these steps here. The first one is to hook up a battery to the AGC bus and then to hook up uh, some components, a 10K resistor and a 330 picofarad cap. So I'll do that in a moment. A lot of equipment to warm up for 15 minutes. I've got that happen. Uh, I've already done that. Disconnect the antenna, check. So channel 13, or unused channel, of course, they're kind of all unused now. <laughs> what it says anyways. Alright, that's 13. Now what I'm going to be doing for the first part is feeding in a 21.25 megahertz signal and inject it into the set. Kind of interesting the way that you inject the signal I think. You know, the, this old tube equipment, the input impedances are so high that really all you need to do to feed the signal in is go to the very first tube in the set and take this metal shield, which is normally grounded, and pop it, oh, on, pop it up so it's not grounded. So leave a little bit of a gap there and connect this to the signal generator and uh, turn the signal generator down to just about the lowest uh, output setting. And that's enough to uh, feed it through the rest of the set. Now to generate that signal, I'm going to use this beast, which I recently restored. I'll talk about the left half of this later, but for the time being, this right half here, it's just a signal generator with three ranges, 2.5 to 5.5 megacycles or megahertz these days, 19 to 50, 54 to 108, and 108 to 216. The reason for these various ranges is specific to the old uh, TV broadcast standards where you'd use 2.5 to 5.5 for the IF stages, uh, ditto with the 19 to 50, and then 54 to 108, that's channels uh, 2 through 7, and then 108 to 216 is channels 8 through 13, I believe. Uh, so here's the output of it. Go into my scope so you can see it puts out a sine wave. And I can vary the amplitude. I can vary the frequency. You can also do a uh, modulation with about a 450 hertz signal. And I turn it on and see it modulates the signal. If I turn this time division down, you can see how it's the waveform is nice and lovely. Yeah, I am using a modern scope, or relatively modern. I love the scope, though, because this is the one I used in college. The rest of this gear is all from the uh, 50s, uh, mainly, and uh, this is from the 60s, I think. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to, uh, let's see, we need 21.25 megahertz. This dial is not accurate enough for this kind of work, so I need to disconnect the output cable here. I hook it up to this frequency counter, which is also a modern piece of gear. There were ways using vintage gear with crystal references and whatnot to 
measure it at a frequency accurately, but you know, <laughs> I don't have to always be so authentic with this though. Uh, so let's see, we're at about 26.6 and a 21.25. So dial this down. For a piece of vintage gear who runs off vacuum tubes, this gets remarkably stable after you leave it on for, uh, for a while. Part of that is because of the, uh, there's some specialized circuitry in here on the, on the power supply with some gas regulators and some amazingly, amazingly well machined uh, oscillator components. Good enough. All right, so I'm going to be feeding the signal into that tube like I mentioned. But before I do that, I have to hook up a couple things. I believe the reason you use this battery on the AGC bus is to trick the receiver into allowing the signal to pass through in a certain way. Um, and the resistor and capacitor, which you hook in here, and then hook up to a VTVM for this first part, that's to uh, essentially filter out the high frequency components so uh, a DC meter can read it. Now they specify VTVM and uh, for things like this it really does matter. If maybe you could use a digital multimeter but probably not. These VTVMs had really really high input impedance and these instructions are laid out specifically for using a VTVM and uh, some of the tests and the component values that you put in are uh, expecting you to be using one so I've got my good old Ico 232 warmed up here and I know it's calibrated so I'm going to grab a four and a half volt battery which actually I don't have so I'm going to take three double A's and solder them end to end wrap in some electrical tape and solder it in and then hook up the little RC network and then resume recording <laughs> 